Okay, so this video follows directly on from the previous one, Transformations of the Parabola Part 1, where we investigated um, parabolas of the form or um, quadratic equations of the form y equals ax squared, and we looked at their graphs. We learnt that a can dilate the graph from the x-axis, and it can also reflect the graph in the x-axis. Okay. Um, today we want to explore two further um, uh, transformations to the parabola. So the first one we're going to look at is equations of the form y equals x squared plus c, where c is a number. Um, and I want you to resume your CAS document from yesterday. If you haven't, if you've kept your document, that's fine. Um, you can just start a new document and insert a graph page and go from there. Um, but I've got my two graph pages um, previously here where we explored a and we explored the basic parabola. So I'm going to insert a new um, page, a new graph page. Okay, so that is control I and choose number two to insert a graph page. And we want to add our grid. So menu um, 263 to add the grid. Now again, you'll see it's now brought up F3, function three. And that's because function two is already defined on the previous page and function one is defined on the page before that. Okay, so this time you want to make F3 x squared plus C, x squared plus C. Okay. And again, it won't know what to draw because it doesn't know what value C is. So when you press enter, it will ask you, would you like to create a slider for C? If your CAS doesn't ask you to create a slider for C, um, follow the steps that were on page four of your document for how you insert the slider yourself. Um, and then you can resume here with the rest of us. Okay. So you've got your slider. You might want to remember, you might want to pick it up and move it somewhere else if you don't like its position. Okay, and you can do that. We talked about that in the last video. Um, and we just want to check the settings. So we're going to press, uh, we're going to right click, so control menu to right click on the slider. Settings. And we're just going to make sure that they match what we're seeing here in this box. So we want um, the initial value here to be zero rather than one. Minimum negative five, maximum positive five. Uh, we can just leave the step size as automatic. It doesn't say anything about that. We'll change the style to be vertical um, and we want to again minimize just to try and stop the overcrowding on our little CAS screen. Uh, press enter or OK to confirm. Okay, again, you can move your slider if you want to adjust it. Okay, so now again, you're going to work your way through the questions. What is the equation of the graph now shown on screen? So we've got y equals x squared plus c, and according to our slider, c is now zero. So the equation we're seeing is y equals x squared plus zero. So that is just y equals x squared. Okay, then I want you to work your way through this like you did last lesson. Press the up arrow of your slider to increase the value of C. Describe what happens as you do that. Press the down arrow of your slider to decrease the value of C. Describe what happens as you do that. Given what you've learnt from those that experimentation, can you sketch the graph of x squared plus 8 on this axis and x squared minus 3 on 2 on this axis? Then I want you to again insert a new page in your document. Okay, so inserting a new page, graphing page, add the grid, menu 263, um, and this time this is the equation that you're going to be exploring. So x plus b all squared. Okay, again, pressing enter will ask you if you want your slider or you follow the steps on page 4 to create your own slider, put it somewhere convenient right click and change the settings according to what's in the box. Leave this one as horizontal, minimized. Okay. Again, you can move its position if you like. Um, and again, work your way through the questions. Press the right arrow of your slider to increase the value of B. Describe what happens. Press the left arrow of your slider to decrease the value of B. Describe what happens. Given what you've learnt from that, sketch the graphs, have a go at sketching the graphs of x minus 6 all squared on these axes and x plus 9 all squared on these axes. Okay, I want you to pause your video um, and go away and, and do that exploration with your CAS and make those comments about what you're seeing and what you're observing and what's changing with the graph as you make those changes. Okay, and then I want you to come back over here um, and I'll talk it through, um, I'll talk through what hopefully you've observed.
Okay, so hey, hopefully you have done your own experimentation with your CAS and you've drawn some conclusions about what you're seeing happening. So let's just bring that together and make sure that we uh, all found the same conclusions. Okay, so what I have here, again, I'm using a different graphing package than you, but um, it's showing you the same things. I've got here the graph of y equals x squared plus c. At the moment, c is zero. Um, and I'm going to um, get up my constant controller, which will let me play around with changing the value of the c, of c the same way that your slider allowed you to do that in your CAS. Um, all right, so what we're seeing here is that as we, the first thing your notes asked you to do was make c bigger, okay? And as I make C bigger, and mine's going in quite a small step size, sorry, we're seeing that the whole parabola is lifting up. It's not stretching or bending in any way, okay? So it's just simply moving up. So for example, here when C is three, that point that was at one one is now at one three. That point that was, sorry, not one three, one four, we've added three onto it, plus three. It's so hard to draw a three with this pen on this um, graphing program. Um, the point that was at 2, 4 has gone up by 3 and it is now at 2, 7. Okay. The point that was at 3, 9 has gone up by 3 and it's now off the screen there and it'll be at 3, 12. The point 0, 0 has also gone up by 3 and it's now at 0, 3. So the whole graph has moved, has translated up by 3. It's a translation, a shift or a move translation up by three. Okay, so hopefully that's what you noted. Oh, sorry, to use the eraser. Hopefully that's what you noted. As um, we add, as we change C, as we make C bigger, the graph translates up. Okay, then it asks you to talk about what happens as you make C smaller. Okay, so we can see as I'm decreasing C, it's going down again. If we talk about relative to y equals x squared, so if we make C, at the moment C is zero, so that's y equals x squared, we make C negative, our graph translates down, and so it goes below the x-axis. Okay, so say for example, here we make C negative two, and we can see what we've done there is we've translated the graph down by two. Okay, so we've subtracted two from all the y coordinates. The point that was at one one is at now one negative one, zero, 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 negative two. Um, 2, 4, 2, 2, 3, 9, 3, 7. Okay, so everything has gone down by 2, so it's subtracting from the y coordinate. Okay, so when we looked at A, A was multiplying the y coordinate, so it meant the y values weren't changing by the same um, flat amount. So when we multiplied the um, point 1, 1 by 2, the y coordinate of 1, 1 by 2, it became 2, so that was like up by 2, but when we multiply the x, uh, sorry, the y coordinate of the point 2, 4, went to 2, 8. So that was a stretch because you're stretching it um, by a different factor, okay? Whereas, so that where that number went up by more than that number did, okay? Whereas here, it's a flat increase. We're simply, sorry, we're simply adding or subtracting from the x or from the y value, and so the graph is just moving up and down, keeping its exact same shape. Okay, so translation up or down with c. Um, the second type that you looked at was trans is, was the x plus b all squared. So again, I'm going to get my constant control happening here. So at the moment, we're looking at x squared because b is zero. Now, the first thing it asked you to do was make b bigger. Okay, so if we make b bigger, interestingly, it's perhaps not what you expected it to do. As we make b bigger, so as b becomes positive 2, so this is the graph of x plus 2 all squared, the graph hasn't gone to the right by 2, the graph has gone to the left by 2. And it is to do with the change being inside the squared function. Okay, So the other two changes we've looked at, we haven't changed the x squared. a times x squared, okay, sorry, or x squared plus c. We haven't changed that bit of the function, we've just done something to the outside of it. This one, however, we've changed what's happening inside the squared. And when you do that, you sort of get the backwards thing to what you might expect. And then it's a sort of slightly vague statement. We'll talk much more formally about that um, over the next couple of years as we develop those ideas around transformations. But for now, we want to observe the patterns and look at what we're seeing happen. Oh, sorry to lose the um, equation. Okay, so it's going to the left by 2 when we make b positive 2. 
So when we do x plus 2 all squared, it goes left 2. So therefore, when we make b smaller, we would expect to see, for example, when b is negative 2, the graph has now gone to the right by 2. Okay, and it's every single point has gone to the right by 2. We simply just added 2 to all the x coordinates of every point and created a graph over here that is to the right by 2 of what the original graph was. Um, so translating left and right with b, but opposite to what you think. So when it is x plus a number inside the bracket, you translate to the left by that number. When it is x minus a number inside the bracket or squared, you're translating to the right by that number. Okay, so back over in your notes. Um, we should have, um, you can fill in your descriptions, but you were asked to draw a couple of graphs. So accurately sketch the graphs of x squared plus 8. So this plus 8 here is going to translate the graph up by 8. So we go from 0, 0 to 0, 8. We go from 1, 1 to 1, 9. Negative 1, 1 to negative 1, 9. 2, 4 to 2, 13. Sorry, <laughs> 2, 12. Try that again. <laughs> um, 3, 9. Uh, adding 8 onto that uh, goes to 317, so way off the chart, okay? So way off the chart up here. So y equals x squared plus 8, okay? Then y equals x squared minus 3 on 2. 3 on 2 is 1 and a half, so minus 1 and a half. We're going to translate the graph down by 1 and a half. So we're going to subtract 1 and a half from all the y values. Down by one and a half, it's going to come down here, down by one and a half, and uh, down by one and a half. Okay, and so we can join up our points. wobbly up there. But anyway, x squared minus 3 on 2 is the green graph. So translating up and down. After you'd explored x plus b all squared, um, you were asked to draw a couple of graphs down here. So x minus 6 all squared. So remember, subtracting a number inside here is going to go to the right by 6. So we're going to take every point and move it across to the right by 6. So 0, 0 goes to 0, 6, uh, 6, 0. 1, 1 goes to 7, 1. Negative 1, 1 goes to 5, 1, okay, 4, 2 uh, goes to, sorry, 2, 4 goes to, um, how far across we're going, 6 goes to 8, 4, okay, negative 2, 4 goes to 4, 4, 3, 9 goes to 7, 9, oh, sorry, I'm adding on, yeah, goes to 9, 9, sorry, I'm adding on 6, losing track of what I'm adding. Uh, negative 3, adding 6 to that goes to positive 3, okay. Positive 4, 16, um, we're adding on 6 goes to 10, 16. And negative 4, 16 goes to 2, 16, okay. And so we should have our parabola, which is y equals x minus 6 all squared to the right by 6. If it's plus 9, we're going to the left by 9, okay? So 0, 0 is going to come back here to 0, negative 9. Negative 8, 1, negative 10, 1, okay? Negative 7, 4, negative 11, 4. Um, negative, uh, so where are we up to? Nine, so 3, 9, um, we'll be at negative 6, 9, moving it to the left. Sorry, that's not mine. Negative 6, 9. Moving it to the left by 9. Okay. Uh, and also we've got negative 12, 9. And then we're off the chart over there. 4, 16. Um, we'll go to negative 5, 16. Okay, so our graph is going to be here. Obviously we can continue it off, assuming that would happen. 
um, and so this is y equals x minus 9 all squared. Okay, so thinking about those left and right translations. Okay, so the work today is, again is from another worksheet, exploring the translations both up and down and left and right.